The fantastic modding community keeps games alive between major releases and major patches, and this game is no exception. Whether it's adding extra vehicles to the game, quality of life improvements, or full game overhaul improvements. So today we're going to look at some weapon mods for 7 Days to Die that I think absolutely improve the quality of this game. Most of these mods are found on 7 days to die mods.com and you don't have to have an account to download anything. You just search for what you want to and you'll get the links to the actual download files. You just click it and ta-da, you get ready to download it. For the mods that are on nexusmods.com, you do have to have an account and have to log in to be able to download anything, but don't be fooled in any of the links that you see pop up saying that you have to pay for anything or you have to do any kinds of donations or any of that. All you have to do is go up near the top of each one of the mods where it says manual and it'll allow you to be able to download any of the mods manually. It's free to do so, so you don't actually have to pay for any of these. So just be warned. The first mod is one that I feel should have been in the default game for a while now, since they added the way you can make parts in here. Say you're getting ready to try and make yourself an iron crossbow. You have everything you need except for you're missing one more bow part. So you gotta scavenge the world or hope for one of the traders to sell it or get it as an award to be able to craft this. But with Donovan's craftable parts, all you have to do is craft one. Forged iron, duct tape, mechanical parts, his mod allows you to be able to make the parts for the different weapons. So handguns, machete, machine guns, military armor parts, all the parts that you would need to be able to craft things are now available as a recipe within the game. And it's, you don't have to unlock it. Now, of course, you still got to be able to get all the materials here, but it's a lot easier to try and go about getting a little bit of forged iron, duct tape, and mechanical parts than hoping the RNG gods drop one of the random bow parts you need here. So that's a definite quality of life one that I highly recommend. And again, I kind of wish they'd put this into the default game here so we could craft those. By default in vanilla, when you zoom in on a scope, you see that the entire rest of the screen is blacked out. That's not how real life works. You keep your off eye open when you're looking down the scope here. So with Alter's picture in picture scope mod, now when you zoom in, you can see you still have your off eye open. It's more natural to the way it would look when you're actually firing. Now, this is just a preference thing, of course. Some people use it, some people don't. Um, I learned about this from Josh, aka Jewoodle. This one, it just kind of adds a little bit of a, an ambience to it, a little bit more of a realism there. And of course, it allows you to be able to kind of see what's coming up on you. It doesn't block out the screen. So this one's actually kind of a nice quality of life one that I do enjoy. The first weapon mod I'm going to recommend is Telric's Flamethrower mod, because who doesn't want a flamethrower? I've been asking for them to put one in the game forever, and who doesn't want a flamethrower? Add this with the Spreadable Fire mod, and you can just be like Nero and sit back and watch the world burn. Also, real quick before I forget to mention, all the links for all these mods are going to be in the video description down below. If you want to go check them out, that's where you'll find them down there. And with the Flame mod here, it gives you a couple different canisters you can get here to give you different color flames. So we got blue flame, green flame, pink flame, and a dark colored flame, or just the default. So you can slap it on there. We'll go with blue because that just sounds fun. Get this bad boy reloaded and see what a blue flame looks like. Oh, that's just lovely. Oh, we got to get some zombies in here and see how well this will work out. Let's see, how about we get a bunch of bows in here? There we go. That's just lovely. I mean, who doesn't like that? I like the blue flame too. Kind of gives it a little bit of an electrical look to it here. All right, I need you all to just go ahead and start dying now. Now, of course, setting zombies on fire is worse similar to the way that it does with Molotovs here. It's not an instant kill, but it just sets them on fire and they slowly burn to death here. So, it's not going to absolutely rock the world of zombie fighting here, but it's a little bit easier to aim than the Molotovs. Maybe, just maybe, some of us can set ourselves on fire just a little bit less. The last of the weapon mods I want to show you is Izeo's weapon mods. Now, there's a few different ones. I've got the shotgun ones, the 7.62 mods, and the 9mm mods. And again, links to these will be in the video description down below. But Izeo went through and added a ton of different weapons for each of these categories. In she was shotguns, we've got 16 new different kinds of shotguns. With 7.62, we've got 16 different kinds of 7.62 rifles. And with 9mm and pistols and style rifles, we've got 12 new guns there. And also, the something that's kind of cool with the, with the rifles and the shotguns, there's a craftable poster you can make that you can actually place on the wall, just like I have right here. And it'll show you which tier the weapons are, the quality that you can get with each one of those. And it just kind of gives you an idea of what you're doing. And you can just 
place this on the wall right where you're, uh, you know, doing all your crafting at here. And same thing with the shotgun pack. You can see it kind of gives all the information here about what the name of it is, the different levels for the different tiers that you're going to get, you know, the rate of fire versus mod, medium damage, that sort of thing. And so that's just kind of a lot of useful information. There's not one for the nine millimeter right now. Now, if there is one, I couldn't figure out a way to craft it, but that's not a big deal. Also, with the shotguns, it adds three new kinds of ammo. You got explosive fragmentation slugs, you got flechette darts, and you've got super penetrator slugs on top of the standard ones. And each one of these mod overhauls also changes the default look to the ammo piles here. So it just gives it a little bit of a different look. And then with a 7.62, there's only the standard three, but you get the three new boxes. And then with 9mm, you get the standard three as well, but the new boxes here. So it just kind of looks cooler. And the mod does a really good job of maintaining the proper animations about how you hold each one of the weapons, about how it looks when you reload it here. And there's a ton of new sounds for each of the weapons. Go through and reload it so you can see pops a new mag in, pulls the slide back to chamber a new round. So you can see they actually properly hold each one of those. And of course, you don't get to see the animations when you shoulder one to try and look down any of the sights, but you can hear how each one of them has their own unique sounds. Also, the mod does a proper job of showing attachments properly. So you can see this one right here is just iron sights, but then we have this one right here with the scope on it. So it does a good job of showing the way that the mod pieces for each one of the weapons is supposed to go. Same thing if you put a silencer on the end of it or a red dot scope, flashlight attachment, extended mag, whatever. It actually goes through and shows the way it's supposed to look when you put these pieces on. So let's go through the weapons it's going to give you here. We got two different models of the 1887. That's a good gun. We got the 1897 trench gun, the CVOS 12. We got an M590. You got the 870 police weapon. The M3 Super 90, a SPAS 12, the Seika 12G, the USAS 12, the AA 12. This one is a beast. This one's like the full auto shotgun. If you ever watched the first Expendables, the gun that Terry Crews is using. That's the gun that he's using is the AA-12. The XM-12G, single barrel shotgun, double barrel shotgun. These are the super shotguns. They do a lot more damage, but they have a lot of slower reload speed. So we got the single and the double, and then you got the bolt action shotgun, and then the hexagon thunderbutt. Now with the 7.62 guns, we've got the Mosin Nagant, you got the M40, you got the L96, the PSG-1. This one's a, definitely a sniper rifle. You got the SKS, you got an M141, an SR-110, you got the M21 SOCOM rifle, it's more of an SMG style gun. The paratrooper gun, you got the RPK, that's an old school gun, you got the big drum mag at the front there. You got the M60E6, which is the up updated version of that. There's an M60 in the game by default, but this one's an updated version. And you got the M240B, the AK-47. Again, there's an AK-47 in the game already, but this one is the AK-47S. A little bit of an updated version of that. The AKM, the Groza, and the AK-15. So these are the different guns you get with the 7.62 mod pack. With the 9mm guns, you got the ARM-9, you got the CZ-75, which is a really nice pistol. You got the Model 38, the MP40, who looks like an old school trench gun, the MP5, that's a nice little SMG, the old school German Luger, that's a really nice gun, the PPSH, fast firing, smaller gun, the Red 9, this one is an old school gun too. I don't know exactly the lineage behind some of these guns, of course, but this one is an older school gun, you can tell by the way it looks. Uh, the Seika 9 and the Scorpion EVO is another little compact SMG. That covers the Isaiah weapon mods. We got shotgun, 7.62, and 9mm weapons. There's also one for 5.56. I didn't include it in this video because there's not any 5.56 caliber weapons in the game by default. If you want to add any of those as well, you can look those up on the same little mod page from Isaiah. And it'll add those kinds of guns and a different kind of ammo source in there too. So you can add tons of different weapons. Give you something else to kind of look for when you're, you know, trying to get your collection of weapons going. Or you just want to have a different kind of play style than what's available in the default. So that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys learned something useful here by watching me show off these different kinds of mods. Give a little bit of way to extend the uh, vanilla version of 7 Days to Die by giving just a little bit of new things to add to the game. Nothing dramatic like a full overhaul 
overhaul, but still nice and fun just to kind of have some new things in the game here. So if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, leave a like on it. If you have any other mods that you like to use, leave it in the comments down below so that A, I can learn about them, and B, other people reading through the comments can learn of new mods that we may or may not have even heard of here. So anyway, subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out on future videos. You guys have a wonderful day. Now I'll talk to you later.